Okay, well, some people have been bugging me for uh, uh, more up-to-date uh, Linux videos, so here we go. Um, on the screen in front of you, you're going to see uh, there's actually Ubuntu 12.04, which is the new long-term support release that uh, came out last month. Um, and uh, this will this will be the screen you see once you've booted up the CD. Um, so you download the uh, download the ISO from uh, the Ubuntu website, burn it onto a CD, boot from the CD, and this is the screen that you'll uh, you'll be presented with. So really, it's very simple. Uh, you can pick uh, your language from a big uh, big selection there. I've selected English and you can actually if you click here you get a screen which is basically the full OS running directly from the CD um, that you can uh, you can experiment with uh, this won't uh, you know, affect your your hard disk at all um, you can actually install from that screen but uh, for the demo here I'm going to just uh, select install Ubuntu and you, you can you can do it um, either in a virtual machine uh, like I'm doing here um, which is you know um, good for the demo because it means I can record it um, and and good for testing as well if uh, yeah if you want to play around but beware there are a few uh, a few sort of gotchas that you'll see when you uh, when you try to install it in a uh, in a virtual machine um, which we'll we'll have a look at as well or if you've got an old machine you know you can you can play around with that too. So I've configured the virtual machine with uh, with enough memory and uh, just about enough disk space to uh, to do an install. I think it's got about eight gigs of uh, of disk space uh, allocated to this virtual machine. So um, just for a, a a nice basic install, um, so you can see yeah you know, what you're going to run into. Uh, you know I'm not going to go into any uh, any complexity of uh, Trying to dual boot it with Windows or whatever you, uh, you know, there's too many uh, too many variables there. If you uh, you know, it, it really depends what you've got, and uh, I, uh, I I could could spend all day trying to dem demonstrate you know all the possible combinations of uh, of what you might want to do. But if uh, you know, if you're a little bit concerned about you know trying it on an old machine, not sure if you could do it, you know, this is uh, this video is for you. So. I'm going to select install Ubuntu, and you're going to get this screen here, which basically is going to say, right, there's a tick there. We've got enough disk space. It thinks that 4.5 gigabytes is the absolute minimum. Um, realistically, if you want to do something with it, you know, you want to say eight or ten absolute minimum, um, maybe 20 if you've got the space and you can, you know. Um, you can create a virtual machine like that, or you know, if it's an old machine that you're just playing around with, you know, whatever it's got. Basically, I, I, I can't imagine it's not, you know you'll have a hard disk that's that's too small. Um, it likes to be connected to the internet. Um, it's not really uh, not really requ required, but it, it it does like to be connected because this then will give you the option to um, download some of the updates. I think you'll find that it doesn't actually download all of them. But it downloads the critical updates for security and um, you know uh, some of the important stuff uh, when you're um, when you're installing it. Now, for the for the purpose of the demo, I'm not going to do that because it will take uh, it'll take longer, um, and I don't really plan to uh, you know to um, to edit this video too much. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, show you exactly what to do and. This one here um, will, will allow you to install some of the uh, more commonly required um, third-party software that that normally can't be shipped with the CD. So this will be downloaded from the internet as well. So the uh, some of the codecs for MP3 playback and stuff like that that, um, that the uh, the license doesn't allow it to be shipped with the thing. You can just tick it there, and it'll download at uh, you know as the install happens but again I'm not going to do that here I, I really do absolutely recommend if you're going to try the system out that you tick both these boxes and it will take a little bit longer um, 
but uh, for, for the purpose of the uh, the speed for the demo I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I definitely recommend you do updates after installing anyway but for, for security that uh, that would be a good idea. So now we've done that we'll do a quick continue from there and it's there's nothing on this disk um, so I'm just going to erase everything and uh, install. Um, you can select you know manual create the partitions yourself um, but this will you know this will install more or less a, a you know a, a reasonably uh, partition system if your system already had windows on it there would be another option here you know dual boot um, but uh, again if you're going to do that um, I, I can't say I've ever had it uh, you know it, it fail but um, it's it's always a good idea to have a backup of your uh, your files if there's anything important there um, that you know that uh, that you couldn't afford to lose. Um, but, uh, certainly, uh, yeah, certainly it will it will resize Windows and find itself some space and do whatever is necessary uh, uh, pretty reliably. Um, so we will continue here. This is going to show the entire disk is eight point six gigabytes. Um, it's going to do the default. This is the first disk. Uh, this is you know, SATA disk A, the only one, and it's going to do the default file system, which is the XT4. You really don't need to worry about that. You could select the drive, but I've only got one. Um, and if if you had a um, a different layout, it would uh, it would display it there. Um, so we say install. Uh, well, I'm in the UK, as you can probably hear, um, and you know you could uh, you, you, know, you could pick your time time zone uh, you know, as necessary. Um, but I'm going to select London, UK, and continue. And it's going to ask me some basic questions. This one is key keyboard layout, um, and out of English UK there's actually a well depending on what type of computer you've got if uh, if you've got a Macintosh and you're installing this on a Macintosh the keyboard layout slightly different even though it is a UK keyboard so you can you can select various uh, options but the default one is uh, is fine um, you can actually test it out here you can you can uh, you know just make sure you, that your uh, your important keys actually work um, and uh, actually, you can you can see quite clearly that if I try if I select US and then try to uh, try to do a pound sign, it doesn't work. So that's that's all fine. Uh, in fact, actually, when I select US, then I get various different US keyboards as well. So we'll go back to the UK one and continue from there. Now it's going to ask you for my name. Um, now it, it knows actually that this this machine is a virtual box so fine I'm gonna call it oh there you go that's a little beep from uh, me being overzealous with the back, uh, backspace key so I'm gonna call this a computer there we go and it's made a bit of a guess at my username you can set a password this is gonna be ABC one two three and well, it'll give you some rating of uh, of the password. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I agree with that assessment, but uh, fair enough. Now here you can select login automatically. This will be, you know, if it's a, let's say it's a fairly minimal um, home machine that you know you don't really care about. Um, as soon as you turn it on, it'll go straight to the desktop. There'll be no security to stop, um, you know, your uh, your friends or you know, if the machine's stolen, um, it'll still go log in straight away. Doesn't require a password. So some people might might require that. Um, alternatively, you can ask it to uh, you know require a password for a login, and this will give you the option to encrypt your home folder, or at least for any given user 
you can select this individually per user. Um, if this was a real machine, I would definitely do this, um, especially if it was a laptop that uh, you know has the possibility to be to be lost or stolen or whatever. It really doesn't have a great deal of overhead at all. Um, I run run my laptops with uh, encrypted home folders, um, and uh, and it's very uh, very reliable. But again, for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to uh, going to skip that. So, because it, it might take uh, a minute or two longer to install. So, require my password and continue again. So, while it's installing, I'm sure we're quite familiar with the uh, little slideshow that you can, you can actually navigate back and forth through the slideshow of uh, what it's um, what it's got in there. Let's have a quick look. So. So little, little uh, example of the of the software store, and this is uh, shot well. It's a photo application. And there's some other software that uh, that you might want to use as well. And they're talking about. Um, and you can uh, you know you can have a uh, quick glance through there. This is talking about the Ubuntu one, which. Uh, very useful. Um, very, very similar to uh, to Dropbox. Um, you know, save your your files in the cloud. Um, I like to think it's a little bit more secure. Uh, and the uh, Ubuntu One account is integrated with the um, Music Store. Um, and well, uh, the roadmap will in the next few releases hopefully lead that into uh, videos and. Uh, lots of other stuff. Um, you can actually share files and folders between uh, Ubuntu One users as well over the, uh, the internet. Um, and there you go. There's the Ubuntu One Music Store, um, which I'll uh, I'll do a quick demo of once since it, once it's installed. Um, what else we got? Yep, all the sort of social networking stuff, Twitter, Facebook, etc. is actually integrated. Um, you have a uh, little, uh, you know, uh, envelope icon which actually gives you access to to all of that stuff, chat, you know, uh, MSN, Google, uh, Yahoo, etc., and broadcasts things like Twitter and um, uh, well, there are other services like Identica and uh, Google. Uh, I don't think Google Plus is supported yet, but that's uh, that's an API issue with Google Plus not uh, not uh, not being uh, publicly available yet. Um, that should get sorted fairly fairly soon. Um, default web browser is Firefox. You can obviously. If you're a Chrome user, have a look for Chromium, which is um, the open source uh, version of Chrome. It's almost, well, almost indistinguishable, if, if I'm honest. And, and Flash is supported as well. Um, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you, uh, you, you might find that there's, um, that you want to, well, <laughs> some people have had uh, some color problems and that can be solved if you uh, go into the settings and turn off the uh, acceleration. Um, that's actually a bug in Flash that uh, is currently being debated. By the time you watch this video, that might might be resolved. But um, judging by the speed that Adobe work, perhaps not. Um, so there we have uh, yeah, Office software. LibreOffice is the uh, the Office suite of uh, of choice here. So if Writer, Calc, and, yeah, and uh, Impress is is a PowerPoint type uh, application. Uh, it's all the Example there. Um, that's uh, that's all fairly well understood. Um, uh, this is uh, sort of control panel. You know, set the appearance backdrop. You know, that's uh, it's all pretty much similar to Windows. And uh, okay, um, some links to. Uh, the uh, Ask Ubuntu forums and support forums. 
Um, and actually, I think they're being pretty brave here because this is actually live, um, real user comments from uh, from Twitter um, that uh, that mention Ubuntu that uh, that it's searching for. Um, these are not screened, as far as I'm aware. They're uh, they're um, they're real comments from from uh, random. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was going to say random. Some of them from Canonical themselves, but um, they. Uh, they are. They do include random uh, messages from uh, from real users as well, um, which is uh, which is pretty brave, I think. Um, and I should actually uh, note that if you were to click on this, uh, a web browser would pop up in the installer as long as you've got a um, uh, a um, internet connection that's accessible. And uh, you know, if you've got a particularly slow machine, you can. Uh, you can, in theory, uh, you know, go and uh, go and look at some videos on YouTube or uh, whatever. Um, you might struggle a little bit there because the installer probably doesn't have uh, Flash installed. But uh, if you're uh, if you're uh, using the HTML5 um, uh, trial on on YouTube, uh, then you can almost certainly. Well, I know you can. You can um, you can watch YouTube videos while it's installing. And now here's where I hope that the uh, the uh, video comes back uh, <laughs> the in the same place on the screen. But I'm going to restart it, um, and the uh, the screen will go a bit messy for a while because the uh, the virtual machine needs to reboot. Um, and it's complaining now that I need to remove the CD, but VirtualBox will will manage that for me, no doubt. Um, and uh, there you go. I believe that came back up at the right uh, size, and uh, you can hear the uh, the login uh, sound. Now, what have we got on the login screen? You can uh, you can select available keyboards, which obviously we only installed one at the time. You can do on-screen keyboard, screen reader. Um, obviously, if uh, you know for. Um, uh, Partially sighted people, you can do high contrast or uh, 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 you know full full screen reader, which actually um, I think uh, is is pretty good. I mean, uh, I'm told that that's quite an expensive option on uh, on Windows if you have to buy it. Um, sound volume, well, there's not much on the uh, on the login screen, um, and we have one. One user. This guest session, by the way, um, it's a bit of a uh, controversy about this because um, it uh, it can be removed, but you uh, it it's not considered a normal user, so it's not in the uh, it's not in the list of users. Um, there's some uh, some hints about that on um, on Google, but uh, maybe I'll uh, I'll cover that in a in a future video. But if you were to log in with the guest session, um, it gives you a temporary, essentially RAM disk that um, that lets you work until you log out, and then it's wiped. Pretty good if your uh, your friends come around and you want to uh, just let them have a have a web browser without uh, seeing what files you've necessarily been working on. But I'm going to enter my password here and log in. So. This is a fully installed system now, um, and that's the, uh, the first login that you're going to get. Um, and here's the uh, this is the the first thing you're going to see uh, when you log in, and um, also it gives you a quick uh, example of uh, what I said. I mean, there was a few when I said there's a, possibly a few gotchas. Um, we're doing this in a virtual machine. Obviously, the resolution is a bit low, but that's uh, uh, well. That was the the default resolution for the virtual machine. Um, and I, you can increase it, um, but unfortunately, well, uh, you will um, you'll find actually that. Um, well, let's let's show how you do that properly. So we go to either little. Uh, settings wheel at the top right hand corner and you can go to system settings um, 
this little thing here that's just uh, popped up is telling me that there's updates available and it's also popped up and told me that there are drivers that I can install um, but here's the, uh, the the problem I wanted to show you in here under appearance in the bottom right hand corner there should be a slider to reduce the size of these icons um, and currently there's not because this virtual machine doesn't support um, 3D uh, graphics and in order to change the size of these icons it has to have a 3D graphics card um, that's something that's been worked on but um, at the moment it's not uh, it's not possible and actually um, everyone has a 3D graphics card except for virtual machines so um, you uh, you have to have working 3D otherwise you can't change the size of those icons so actually I did um, I did enable the uh, the 3D graphics in the virtual machine but it's it's a bit hit and miss to be honest with virtual machines and it does actually require a driver um, which it to be fair has popped up and told me that there's a driver here that I can have um, which is the uh, well guest additional modules for um, uh, for VirtualBox and so I'll just go there activate that it's going to ask me for my password and we'll go and let it do that while I'm talking um, pretty good idea also here it's it's it, it's told me there's 224 updates I can do. Um, I'm not going to do those for the moment because uh, no doubt it'll uh, it'll take a while to uh, to download and install. Um, even if you uh, you know have a you know, say an Nvidia graphics or uh, ATI or it's AMD these days, isn't it? Um, then you're going to have um, this this pop up um, because even though it will come up with um, fairly passable drivers, um, you really will want to install you know the uh, the correct the proper drivers from the uh, from the manufacturer of those cards. If you have an Intel graphics card, uh, well on board, um, then depending on what model it is, your mileage may vary. If it's one of the Sandy Bridge or I Ivy Bridge on board. You're pretty much uh, you're pretty much golden. Um, if it's one of the earlier ones, depending on which model it is, you may or may not get full 3D support. Um, it it should be you know quite usable, but uh, your 3D possibly questionable depending on um, what uh, what model of chipset. Uh, it actually is but uh, but any of the modern ones are all pretty good uh, so this one now has said you know, that driver is available um, and uh, I probably should install uh, I, should, I probably should reboot it just to see so I'm gonna go and shut down and restart that just to see if it comes up with the uh, the driver um, the correct driver that was probably a bad idea because no doubt it's uh, it's going to come up in a different resolution, but we'll uh, we'll wait and see. Um, if it does, I'm pretty sure it will come up in uh, in a higher resolution now, and uh, I may have to edit the video to uh, <laughs> to correct that. But uh, we'll we'll see. Okay, just rebooting. Oh yeah, that's a nice big resolution. So I'm just going to edit the video to uh, to change that resolution. Okay, we're right back. Um, obviously the resolutions uh, changed somewhat, and uh, those of you that have looked at the clock will have noticed that I might have spent a minute or two throwing the cat out of here before she uh, decided to. Uh, <laughs> To have a go at the microphone. Um, hopefully, she won't come back, but uh, we'll uh, we'll have to see. Anyway, I can log back in, and uh, I will. We'll just uh, if 
quickly check to see if it did actually enable our uh, our 3D support in the uh, in the virtual machine. Yep, we uh, we have virtual 3D now, so I can shrink all those icons down. Um, that's been a big uh, big bone of contention for some people, and quite honestly, I'm not uh, I'm not a fan of their uh, of their backdrop either. So let's pick something a little bit uh, a little bit less garish. Right. Um, so there is our desktop. Um, we have uh, we have everything working. Uh, there's a browser. I don't need to know what my rights are. Um, and uh, you know this was this is going to behave as you'd expect. Um, you can uh, set up your mail and uh, broadcast and. Uh, you know, well, you know, this is uh, Twitter, etc. Um, your chat accounts just set up there. Um, this one's actually quite clever. The um, if you're uh, if you're on a network that might have other people on it, it will do um, self discovery of uh, of people on the same network as you. Um, you may or not want, may or may not want that, but it's quite. Uh, it's quite keen to uh, to set that sort of stuff up for you. Um, there you go. Look, do you want to connect to any one of these <laughs> any one of these services? Facebook, Google Talk. Well, people nearby. Um, AIM. Probably no ICQ. Probably most people don't know. ARC. MSN. Lots of them. I don't really. Yeah. Uh, Plan to do those now, though. So I'm going to close that down. Um, you've got uh, well, I guess the, probably the uh, the most interesting thing here is the software center, which we can uh, take a quick look at. Um, okay, so a few of you probably uh, seen the humble bundle um, before. Let's have a quick look at uh, if it's going to give me that. Okay. Uh, hmm. Ah, maybe that was a coming soon thing. Right. Either way, um, uh, if I uh, once I've logged in, um, I can uh, turn on this recommendations thing, which uh, which will look at what software I've installed. Um, but uh, I don't have. I'm not. I don't. Uh, I don't plan on showing you what uh, what my account is. So I'm not going to do that uh, just yet. Uh, but you know, suffice to say, if you buy some stuff, and it'll tell you other stuff that you might like to uh, you know to install, whether it be uh, free or uh, or commercial software. Um, but uh, there are some um, and there are some packages that uh, you know you. You'll probably be quite familiar with from uh, from Windows. So VLC, for example. Not sure about the uh, the screenshot with, uh, with the My Little Ponies there, but you know. So you can just click on Install there, and it'll uh, ask you for your password. And uh, I'm sure those uh, those people who have taken a look at the Windows 8 preview would have seen that. Uh, that uh, they've uh, they've uh, slavishly copied this, but uh, still, and you can click on the progress there, and it'll show you which thing you're installing and what the progress is. But um, ah, yes, that humble bundle was actually an advert. It's not in the store yet. But that's uh, fine. Um, So if you search for restricted, this is definitely something I recommend installing, Ubuntu Restricted Extras, um, which is uh, all the stuff that you don't get by default um, for uh, codecs and uh, um, and the like. Um, well, uh, well, <laughs> you just need to have a look at the reviews to see, uh, to see why. <laughs> um, if you uh, if you try to do some uh, to playback some uh, some videos like H.264 and stuff, you will uh, 
you'll need to muck around unless you install this. Um, again, it's one of those things that can't be shipped with the um, with the DVD, CD, um, ISOs uh, because of uh, potential licensing issues. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's about uh, the size of that. Um, you can uh, you know, spool through here. Um, there's uh, Inkscape is definitely a recommended um, little app. Um, there's uh, there's lots of app, lots of software to uh, to look at. Some of it you will you will have seen. Um, some perhaps not not so much. Um, uh, Seven Zip is uh, it's well worth installing. Um, if you deal with encrypted archives, you'll uh, you'll need that for the integrated. Um, f you know the file manager has uh, compressed file integration, and if you use encrypted uh, zip files, you'll need that. Um, just uh, just a quick example. Um, Audacity. Um, Windows users will be fairly familiar with that. Um, the GIMP is a terrible name. Uh, it's actually quite a good, uh, a good package, though. To be fair, um, uh, video or oh, sorry, um, graphics uh, editor. Um, it's, uh, the closest to you, you know, the closest to Photoshop that you'll get for uh, <laughs> for no money, but um, very uh, very good nonetheless. Uh, what else can we find? Um, well, those of you that are uh, into three D will uh, will definitely um, know what Blender is. Um, there's just there's just so much software here. Dropbox, Chromium for those that uh, that feel the need for Chrome. We can just install that as well to uh, to take a quick uh, look. Um, just uh, browsing around here. I haven't uh, I haven't really planned any of uh, any of these. Um, Thunderbird will already be installed. Um, and uh, actually, I'll show you the dash in a second, just to uh, just to have at that. Um, so how you might uh, how you might look at that. Um, some of the games that are in here are uh, are not bad. Some of them are um, uh, slightly uh, questionable. Um, Braid is uh, this is one of the uh, you know, for purchase apps. Um, a lot of people think Braid is uh, is, is worthwhile, but it, um, read the description because um, it's uh, it's it's a. You can hear the uh, the cat in the in the background there. Sorry about that, but yeah, read the description if you uh, if you're interested in this because it's it's very strange. It's uh, it's it's more of a puzzle than an action uh, an action game. But uh, it gets very good ratings. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't for me though. Um, what else have we got? There's lots of uh, engineering apps that uh, just hundreds of, uh, of of really great uh, apps in there. That um, most most of them are uh, yeah are uh, uh, free or um, open source. You can contribute to them, of course. Um, if uh, if you want XPMC, um, nice uh, media center app, which you can you can just uh, pull down and use that for. Uh, that's like Windows Media Center. I, I'd argue it might even be better. Um, anything about uh, XPMC, as far as I know, currently doesn't support um, uh, you know uh, off-air TV receiver cards. Um, that may get uh, that may get addressed, but um, not for this release, at least. Um, a lot of good stuff. Um, this is definitely this is right. Let's have a 
quick demo here. This this sound settings thing is actually really quite good. I'm not going to fiddle with it because the uh, the recording that uh, that I'm doing currently is is actually going through the sound system here. Uh, well, it's going through the sound system of the same operating system that's outside of this virtual machine, but I don't don't want to mess around with it too much. Um, either way, this thing is an enhanced version of that. Um, if you're uh, if you're doing a lot of video uh, or audio work, you you might want to have a look at that. Um, particularly if you um, if you use Skype, because um, Skype doesn't for some reason allow you to specify. Um, specific audio devices and, and this will allow you to do it um, for any application which is pretty useful because um, I'm very, this is actually the screencaster that I'm using to record this video um, yep <laughs> simple effective excellent well yeah that's why I'm using it uh, yeah just loads and loads and loads of software um, and uh, yeah, perhaps we should have a look at some of the stuff that uh, that I did actually install. Let's close this off. Um, well, that's uh, <laughs> that's VLC. Um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be fam you're familiar with that. I don't have any content on this machine because, well, I just installed it about thirty seconds ago. It's Chrome. Trying to make me sign in again. But um, I think you'll recognise that from uh, from the Google site. Welcome to Chrome. Well, it's not quite Chrome, but very very close. Yay! Um, YouTube. Well, um, I didn't install Flash. Perhaps we could do that as a demo. Um, there uh, you go, you need to upgrade your flash. Well, clearly I didn't install it at all, so upgrading it is a bit of an understatement. Let's uh, let's do that. Everything is done through the software store. If someone tries to tell you that you need to download a binary, um, then yeah, um, definitely, uh, definitely um, think carefully about it. Uh, you know, if someone told you if you had an Android phone that you needed to get the uh, the binary and you couldn't get it through the the, uh, the Google store then you'd look at them funny and that's exactly how you should treat this um, it's very different to Windows um, this is why you don't have uh, so many viruses here because you know um, pretty much everything comes through here it's all vetted um, you can you can you can get packages from from elsewhere but you really want to you know 99% of everything you would do would come as uh, you know, as as packages through this uh, software center. Um, so let's get Flash. Here we go. Adobe Flash plugin. Install that. Uh, it's going to ask me for my password again because I haven't actually uh, interacted with uh, with this for a while. Um, I apologise for the cat squeaking in the background. Um, I'm sure, she wants to escape from the uh, from the confines of the house and uh, explore the garden, but uh, not right at the moment. Anyway, there we go. Just check on the progress of that. It's nearly done. So, just give it a moment. What can we do while it's doing that? Um, well, obviously the the Ubuntu one installation. Um, there you go. Store files and photos, streaming music collection. That, that's quite interesting, actually. Um, if you if you put put uh, well, if you synchronize your music through Ubuntu One, um, then if you actually have the commercial service, you can stream it to a web browser from anywhere. It will index it online, and uh, there's a mobile streaming app and a web streaming app that um, currently are. A little bit suspect, I have to admit, but um, they uh, they promised me they're working on it. Um, but it definitely works. Um, but uh, there is uh, they, they could have more more sorting uh, 
sorting options but uh, anyway um, so we should uh, have got flash installed by now so let's, uh, let's do that um, let's go back up to YouTube yeah you don't make <laughs> it didn't it didn't make a liar of me it didn't complain about flash and then with uh, let's, uh, let's pick a pick a video that doesn't look too too dangerous Oh, I got the wrong wrong one straight away, didn't I? There. Um, this is uh, this is live, as you can tell. Um, uh, so a video that uh, that I can actually show without having to worry. And the cats. Yep. There we go. I have a cat come to visit me, so. Expect the microphone to be easy at any moment. Right. Okay. And that obviously, is, you know, is going to work just as well in um, Firefox there as well. Okay. Well, it's telling me it thinks I'm in the, the UK. Now well, we'll play the same video, perhaps. There we go. Peggy three. As you'd expect. Uh, okay, so if you click here on the uh, little old, uh, speaker icon, which is your volume control, you can uh, you can pull up this uh, music player. Um, well, I don't have any music or podcasts on here. But clearly, um, radio pre-installed, um, Last FM and Lever FM. Um, okay, let's pick something else. <laughs> Some radio stations, anyway. Um, let's stop that. And uh, there's also the music store. Let's maximise this uh, this app because it's quite nice. Um, there's your music store. Uh, you know, just browse through that or search by artist or um, you know, what uh, you like. Pick one. Yeah, you know, as you'd. Uh, as you'd expect, I guess. Um, hopefully you can preview them. See, there you go. MP3 playback is not available. That would be because I didn't install the um, restricted extras. Uh, it may... Yeah, there you go. It's going to give me the, op the opportunity to install it now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> if I remember the... Uh, the password I used that will help. Okay, so integration directly into the software, uh, the software manager, and with any luck, that should just work straight away. <laughs> okay, perhaps it won't. Uh, it wants some other plugins to install. Great. But, as I said, if uh, that's what it's going to install. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, again, you're going to avoid all of this by installing the restricted extras uh, immediately when you finish doing the installation. Uh, but it's nice to know that. Um, that it integrates. There we go. So, uh, back to the back to the store. Um, let's pick something else, and then you can, you know go through this and um, you will need a uh, Ubuntu One account to do this because um, 
basically, um, once you've uh, once you've bought um, something from this, then you will uh, you will uh, find that it gets downloaded directly to your online storage uh, through Ubuntu One, um, which means that you. <laughs> You're not going to uh, suffer from the oh well you know you downloaded it when you bought it and now you've lost it kind of scenario. It'll uh, it'll it'll stay in your Ubuntu One account once you've bought it, so you can download it as many times as you like from there. And uh, in fact, actually, you can even go online to uh, you know to a web uh, to a web interface and uh, and download it from there if you're uh, if you're not uh, not at home or not on your uh, not on your uh, Ubuntu computer. Um, just to uh, go over some more of it, uh, we have here. This is your network stuff. Um, if uh, if you didn't have a wired connection, if it was a Wi-Fi connection, you'd have uh, this would be the uh, the icon for it. Would be a slightly different icon. Um, it would give you the option for configuring your Wi-Fi through there. So clock and calendar. I actually like to change that so that um, it has uh, day and date on there. Um, you can add seconds as well if you really wanted to, but perhaps not. Um, so that's all that. Um, there you go. You can set up some more user accounts. Um, remember you, this button here. It, currently. Well, <laughs> one of the reasons why um, we like to think that there's uh, there's a lot lot uh, less malware here is that that you never are logged in as administrator, um, and each individual application you know may or may not be requesting you. You've noticed me has to enter my password a number of times so far, and that's. Uh, that's really because you know just popping up a dialog box that says do you really want to do this is uh, that's not security um, so if I wanted to create a user here I've opened the user accounts admin but I'm still not actually logged in with the administrator rights even though this account has administrator rights I would have to unlock that dialog and uh, enter my password again and that would give this process the right to to uh, to edit stuff and uh, nothing else and as soon as I close that it's gone um, so much much more secure uh, what else we've got under system settings that you might uh, might be interested in um, okay so appearance um, well this is as you'd expect um, what happens when we're going to turn the screen off after half an hour and lock it and turn it off and ask for a password. Probably don't really care about having a password um, in the virtual machine, or maybe I do. Um, you can add some more keyboards. So if you, if for some reason you have multiple keyboards, you can actually install more than one. Um, this is a useful thing. The um, the system actually keeps a history of. Uh, a centralized history so for browsing and uh, f recent files in um, your office suite or whatever is all centralized um, but you can actually ask it not to record certain things and you can delete uh, recent activity for certain pe time periods if you uh, if you want to have that uh, not in the uh, in the log for some reason um, so uh, it's worth noting, remembering that that's there. Ubuntu one we've already looked at. Additional drivers, Bluetooth. All this stuff is as you'd expect. This is for color profiles for your displays and your printer. Um, well, I've got one VirtualBox display. I could actually add more if it was a laptop. Then, uh, by default, plugging a extra screen into your laptop would. Um, Add an extra screen, but you could set it up in here, perhaps for mirroring or what have you. Um, keyboard and mouse uh, 
fairly obvious network. Power's relatively useful. Um, this machine clearly doesn't have uh, the possibility to be on battery, so there's less options there. But um, it's where you can uh, you can tell it what to do um, when uh, when it's on power or battery. Um, these are all fairly self-explanatory. This, if you're a corporate user, this is the management service for um, managing you know, multiple machines. Uh, you can sign in with that. Um, change your time zone. Um, so this is uh, automatically set the time from the internet or manually. I can't think of a reason at the moment why you'd want to do it manually. Um, uh, yeah, accessibility and user accounts we've looked at. Um, really a very, very solid um, solid platform. Um, a lot of people are going to be confused about having the, the menu bar down the left but since uh, you know since most people have widescreen displays um, uh, using space on the uh, on the side rather than on the bottom is actually really very logical and currently you can't move this um, so be prepared to get used to it. Um, I think it's actually very good um right one thing one more thing i guess that uh, that i could show is here if you click on this uh top button here you get a dash um what's called the dash um and the dash home will show you recently used files or applications etc um so these are the applications you've seen me load well, some of them are, and some of them are the default ones. Um, there's a uh, applications um, page in here, which allows you to see recently used apps, um, some other installed apps. Um, well, all of the installed apps, if it comes down to it, um, and uh, other apps that uh, you could perhaps install, and you can search through those. So if I went to search for uh, well Skype's for Skype is actually not in the um, the default repository and it won't show it if it's not in the repositories that are enabled so um, that's uh, I, I can't search for that but I'll show you how to in a second um, and you can actually come down here and you can look at just particular types of applications that are installed uh, games or education or, or all of them. Um, we have files and folders, music, these are called lenses by the way, and then we have video lens which actually allows you to search for videos in iPlayer or YouTube or what, you know what have you. Um, we'll pick one and it'll just open up whether it be iPlayer or if you're in the UK or Whatever services you have uh, you have available there, um, and uh, since we since we mentioned Skype, what you'll see is if I go into the software center and search for that, this isn't as clean as it perhaps could be, but, but Skype is there, and you can say install, and um, it's now. Okay, then maybe they've fixed that because sometimes it'll tell you that that library isn't that software library is not available, and you need to uh, just confirm that you want to add the software library which has Skype. This will be the third-party software library, partner library. Um, but that's obviously installing. Um, I can't say I'm a particular fan of Skype and. Uh, the uh, the Linux version of Skype is a little bit behind the uh, the Windows one, um, but you know it uh, it, it makes uh, it makes calls, um, video works, um, it, uh, it it does the job. Um, there's a few gotchas with it. Um, I uh, 
I, I mentioned or alluded to a few of them previously where the uh, the audio device selection is not great which is one of the reasons why I like to uh, install that uh, that pulse audio uh, volume control application that allows you to uh, to really finely control applications that are running so if you open a Skype call and it's coming out of your speakers and it's using the wrong microphone and stuff like that you can actually change it in real time um, and it will remember that as well um, the system will remember which which audio devices you told it that this particular application was uh, was using, um, which uh, which Skype doesn't, which uh, which I think is uh, fairly inexcusable on uh, Skype or now Microsoft's part, I guess. Um, but uh, what can I say? Um, well, I have a big list of uh, software that, uh, that I like to install, but I guess you're going to need to play with that for yourself. But um, one of the things that I uh, I would suggest is something like Skype, for example. Now I've installed it, it's there. Um, I would put that in startup applications. Because um, then when it starts up, obviously it will appear here. Um, so. That's <laughs> the wrong one. <laughs> Virtual machine uh, failure there. Um, right. Um, you've got to agree, haven't you? So you get your little icon up here. I'm not going to sign in or anything, but um, yeah. Uh, one, one of the little gotchas is if you put it on the dash, you can load more than one copy. And uh, I don't recommend that. Um, it uh, if you load more than one copy, it uh, it forgets your saved passwords, which is uh, which is not uh, not ideal. Um, uh, there we go. But it's it's harmless. It sits up there and does nothing. Um, most people, I guess, would assume that Skype should be left loaded all the time anyway. But uh, there you go. There's my uh, my quick installation tour of uh, of installing Ubuntu for the first time. Um, I hope you like the video. I shall have to see how long it is now, but um, probably too long. Anyway, shut that down and uh, goodbye.